Are we on? All right, let's go. Welcome to uh, another episode of the Uru Labs podcast uh, from Bengaluru. Ever complained about how bad our cities are, how bad your commute is? You'll get to hear from people who are working to solve these problems in their own way. So this is your weekly soapbox for urban sustainability. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share these videos. I am Satya Shankaran and with me is Nirav Kodolikar today. Uh, and on the show today, we have Satya Arikutram, a consultant with decades of experience working with transport organizations, both in India and the UK. Most recently, however, he has been involved uh, with the rollout of the Namayatri, a ride hailing app for auto rickshaws in Bengaluru. Uh, we'll hear more about it from him. The first mobility app to be based on the Beckon or the ONDC protocol. Welcome to the show, Satya. Thanks, Satya. Uh, nice to see you. On the... Hello, Nero. Good morning. Good morning to both yeah. of you. So today it is Satya meets Satya. Ah, that's right. Yeah. So let me uh, begin by asking you this question. Yeah. Is this the end of Uber and Ola ride hailing as we know it? That's an interesting question, Satya. I don't want to uh, sort of know, take a binary position. It's an end or a start or whatever. But definitely it's a new paradigm shift in how we, what you call, empower the service provider uh, without an intermediary. So today technology uh, enables us to actually have a direct digital conversation between a potential commuter and a driver who is willing to make that transaction happen. With the regulatory structures already in place for, especially auto rickshaws, as you rightly said, you've got your meter fare and everything in place. So the role of intermediary should really be challenged as to what exact value does an intermediary do in allocating a driver to you, which you couldn't do yourself. So that was the fundamental premise in which this entire uh, Namaya 3 uh, application started because it did two things. It uh, uh, got back uh, what I call as driver autonomy and agency because they are in charge now. They choose the price point and they choose whether to take the trip or not. And for the customer, which was always important, which was always there in our brick and mortar uh, economy, the choice. So we got a choice of drivers and the drivers have got autonomy. So that was a very, very elegant uh, uh, fit. And I believe this model is definitely going to ask questions to incumbents as to what value they're adding for the commission they expect from both the rider and the driver and the driver that's for sure right so just tell us a little bit about how namayatri is different from the ola and the uber app yeah uh, really why is this just another yeah. yeah that's a good question actually it's fundamentally different uh, because i call this as an uh, and driver empowerment app based on a saas model why do I call it a driver empowerment app? Because uh, most of the apps in the mobility field these days uh, make drivers to lose their agency. They almost become an uh, automaton in the sense that an algorithm allocates you take this trip, you take that trip. Whereas in Namayatri, the driver actually has got a choice to take a trip on an informed basis. So essentially, there's absolute 100% transparency. You might have heard about the lot of cancellation issue which, with the incumbents in the past few months. And that was basically because the driver wouldn't be told as to where this ride is uh, being accepted. So once he sees the more, more data, depending on his own uh, intention or interest to serve that particular area, he either cancels or tries to tries his best to get out of that trip. And that's the reason uh, that information asymmetry was the biggest issue. So it was always a question of the uh, incumbents trying to chase efficiency by allocating a driver quickly against driver themselves voluntarily accepting whether they wanted to make a trip or not. So it's almost, uh, uh, we all talk about AI and chat GPT. The best, best chat GPT is actually your aggregators because the driver doesn't know what trip is going to get, where he's going to go. That was the situation. But in Namaya 3, it's a fundamental shift. The driver actually gets a choice to review the trip on offer and also the price point at which he's willing to fulfill. So these are the two big fundamental shifts. And for the customer, he gets a list of willing drivers. So because it's informed choice at both ends, the cancellation rate will reduce. That's our hypothesis. And in fact, we are seeing that thing. And uh, um, if at all there is a cancellation, it's for genuine reason because the customer actually dropped out. What we are seeing is quite interesting. The customer cancellation rate is higher than the driver cancellation rate. In Namaya. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
so there are there are two points in this uh, whole app right one is the ability for the driver to choose his ride which means you won't so he need not pick and then cancel is what you're saying he might just refuse to participate yeah. in being available to Absolutely. you at all so are you saying that was not available earlier so uber and all that doesn't make that person a choice so it wasn't can... until okay. recently until recently but then what is happening in uber and ola and i take this name without any how to call aspersions on their model or whatever they are aggregators current incumbents uh what was happening or what is still happening there is their incentive structure is a little bit uh, perverse in a sense that um, uh if you if a driver uh, logs on for a day for uh, being available for uh, taking trips uh, there is a fat or a decent sum of money only if he completes 10 trips within 10 hours or 15 trips within 2 hours so it's almost like an uh, hamster mode these drivers are always chasing uh, moving targets these targets are fixed at the start of the day not even fixed prefixed or whatever and then they keep changing throughout the day dynamically so the drivers always felt that they are always on the move they don't know whether they are earning or losing so the opaqueness of the pricing the opaqueness of the incentive structure all of that made them think that they lost their agency and which was one of the top feedback we got when we started uh, having this conversation with the drivers at the ground level as to what their pain points were so this almost becomes um, uh, they've given their agency to an algorithm that's the situation with the, the current aggregators so we want to bring back that human element without losing that efficiency that's the uh, model of namayatria what so one of the re- why would they why do uber and all all our i use like like you said we use those words as a synonym for other app aggregators mm. which are in the market yeah. right now there could be a few more like rapido and others but they do this incentive model for what reason you think is it just to up the top lines and things like that is is that why it is i think the the business model itself uh, depends on uh, um, depends on driver revenue uh sharing a part of driver revenue for their uh, top line and that's the main uh, issue here whereas in a saas based model okay. you got drivers actually paying for the customer discovery tool like you and me we pay for microsoft teams every month and the drivers pay their subscription fee per day uh, to be able to discover customers so it becomes that choice that's the fundamental difference so this is more like a customer discovery tool rather than a product that somebody is running to earn revenue Absolutely. out of right it's a it's a tool for independent auto drivers who are trying to just yeah. have access to discovering Absolutely. the customers that's how you are Absolutely. Uh, do you feel it transforms anything else i also heard that because these uh, tools are directly available to the auto drivers yeah. uh the commissions are lower mm. and the percentages that they get to keep are higher is that yeah true? well i mean it's uh, is even far better than that actually it's what you see is what you get mm-hmm. so the driver sees the fare the customer sees the fare there is not a single paisa difference between what both these parties see and the driver gets the fare at the end of the trip he keeps to get the entirety of to himself that's his own yes what it and the customer has taken the right and he pays to the service provider what the saas provider gets is for maintaining that infrastructure at the back end for enabling this conversation between the customer and the rider so essentially it's run like an empowered digital cooperative more number of drivers per driver software maintenance cost will come down eventually so so much so thanks to the uh, partnership with ondc customer discovery can happen through multiple channels so tomorrow you may not even have a namayatri customer app on your phone but you can still discover a namayatri auto ride by just uh, using a chatbot on a whatsapp uh, or even through a paytm or phone pay so that because they are all on ondc enable so is namayatri so that the customer discovery cost will come down more number of drivers means your fulfillment trip fulfillment infrastructure will have a larger cost base to, to spread no larger base to spread your cost around so it's a win win situation for every all around so there mm-hmm. is no need to take a cut off of every transaction yeah. you could subscribe to it separately and pay for it separately is what you're That's saying right, yeah. but you spoke about ondc mm-hmm. uh, i've also heard this is built on the beckon Uh, what why is that advantage is what does ondc and beckon bring to this it could have been any other app built by anyone else that's a good question actually what this does is uh, being on an open protocol means uh, say for instance the current incumbents uh, will have to discover our potential customer only through the interface of their own platforms i can discover an uber ride through an uber customer app or a ola ride or a ola customer app. what happens is a discerning customer today no actually it depending on uh, price sensitivity and his ability to uh, spend on commute he toggles between different apps to see which is cheaper 1 2 3 
so that that that's that particular situation will go away if you're on an open mobility network because what happens is if you'd say a to b any operator on the open mobility will be able to have a quote hey i am f- willing to fulfill this particular trip at this price point price point price point so today it's namayatri tomorrow it could be somebody else somebody else whoever is on the open, open mobility and then you get a choice of operator uh, or i would even call choice of operators choice of service providers service providers may be having a choice of software uh, providers for them it could be namayatri for one it could be uber for one if they join choose to join the open mobility that's all like say for instance uh, i may use uh, google and somebody else may be using teams so that that's the sort of uh, analogy i can give yeah so that's the power of open mobility and ondc itself no uh, why it's important is because the protocol is interoperable uh, say for instance to, um, you are making an uh, purchase on big basket or whatever in the morning and straight away you finish your uh, shopping list and you, you you want to go to your office and why should you toggle between big basket and another app if big basket is on open mobility you simply say i want an auto on the big basket app itself because both are on the same thing it will fetch everybody with the register uh, with the what do you call within the registry of a uh, mobility register all service providers are willing to take it will broadcast hey somebody here wants to do this a to b a taxi wala may go or an auto wala may go or a multi modal op specialist may come and stitch together a trip between a metro and an auto and then you get a three or four choices as i'll take this so that's as elegant it can become no because you say you are on the open mobility network yeah uh and you're going to get all these uh, benefits i want to go back to saying that every auto driver now mm. uh, has the ability to just put this namayatri app it's still an app it's not on the it doesn't have all of the fancies of the open mobility network yet right so it's still an app you need to download at the moment. something at the moment at the at the at the moment yeah. so it can scale it will scale over okay. time and it might become the open thing that you're okay. talking about but uh, for the but for the driver there are benefits of an organized network mm-hmm. right so the aggregator also f- uh, became the the guy who would bring all these people together mm-hmm. now i is it possible i heard that your namayatri is being uh, run by the auto drivers union is that what you when i say run uh, you have to define the word run okay the soft the, it's a, okay so it's, yeah, it's basically it's it's a very elegant model the software side the mm. infrastructure side the technical side is always managed by just pay which is the technical provider right the actual fulfillment of the trip the service provision is done by the drivers so when it's run by auto drivers yeah it's run by auto drivers when the software running or powering that it's run by just pay and the drivers eventually will pay a subscription fee to the software provider on a saas model it's as simple as that go ahead no, like what was regarding this open thinking. mobility framework itself the only reason i'm calling it a framework is whatever you've mentioned it seems to be currently at like a broad uh, idea level so in your mm-hmm. opinion just coming back to what it would actually look like in the future mm-hmm. what do you think that let's just see that product specification would look like yeah i mean it would look like you, you will have a host of niche players say i'll i'll just give a very hypothetical example today on open mobility uh, we have got namaya okay that's the only mobility provider at this point in time uh, but the customer discovery uh, for namaya 3 is now not only namaya 3 all other applications which are on ondc it could be a phone pay it could be your paytm all they need to do is they have to talk to namaya 3 and integrate uh, their apis and say phone pay will say on phone pay if you say i want to fetch an auto that api will make a call to namayatri and namayatri will just serve all the list and without having a customer client on your phone you'll be able to fetch a ride and because phone pay did a discovery for namayatri there will be a uh, network level uh, okay, what do you call uh, clearing house it's a 1% or a 2% whichever the government decides for for those such kind of transaction so suddenly the cost of customer discovery has reduced for the saas operator namayatri he need not go all songs and bells uh, giving incentives to customers to attract to namayatri because namayatri is become discoverable through any app on the ondc so that's the first and for the customer today i got only namayatri but tomorrow it may be bmtc and bmrc both of them will join and then when uh, on the phone pay i want to go from a and b that particular request is broadcast not only to the 
problem hai the it's broadcast to bmtc also and bmrcl also and bmrcl and bmtc make to in the first stage they may simply serve their static time table this is what i can do for your a to b and namayatri may do but namayatri may get to cleverer and say hey let me stitch a multimodal trip with bmtc and bmrcl so it will offer a you want to go to a to b completely from auto this is your plan you want to go to a to a1 by auto a1 to b1 by metro b1 to b by thing this is your plan and if that is significant and if the customer is price sensitive you may choose that so suddenly multi modal trip is not an theory or an powerpoint presentation it's a reality you can make that seamless so that is the power of open mode sure and actually i should have brought this up earlier but for the mm. viewer could you quickly explain what ondc is as a high level summary Oh, sure. O- ONDC is basically a Ministry of Commerce Section 8 company formed in 2021, I think. Yeah, in 2021. And uh, the sole aim of ONDC is to, di- is to provide digital enablement and empowerment to small retailers, small entrepreneurs like auto drivers or and your mom and pop store around the corner who today in the platform economy can't participate in this because there are thresholds so you can't become an amazon vendor or flipkart vendor if you don't have a certain turnover or if you don't have your inventory cataloged in a particular manner so all those barriers were there the government realized that what was happening in the west is suddenly your mom and pop stores were disappearing because of all this platform economy the government said oh no no we shouldn't go the same pathway we need to empower and remove barriers today you can't find ola and uber in kola do you find it no but because mobility open in open mobility in kola or tumkur you may find and ride hailing app riding on open mobility because it's cheaper it's easier so that was the uh, most sole intention to empower small entrepreneurs small informal workers to participate in the digital economy and they got different uh, categories and mobility as a category got added yesterday through this partnership in namaya sure so actually coming back to Hmm. the key mode of transport that dhanama yatri caters to which is the auto rickshaw so hmm. in your opinion what do you look at i mean how do you look at the role of what the auto rickshaw is to a city because whenever i speak to people i always get mixed reactions when it comes to just viewing the auto rickshaw as a user hmm. it's sometimes very convenient sometimes not as comfortable as a taxi but because from the consumer standpoint they always look at cons- comfort and convenience but in your opinion what is an auto rickshaw to a city i'll give you a simple experiment you go to uber or ola type in a to b most of the times the journey time of auto is the fastest you want to check that out and i think people all talk about air condition but this is a natural air now auto you can't get more air than an auto you get a natural air and also okay and in terms of its ability to navigate the bylanes of if i'll take bangalore as example maleshwaram or chamrajpet auto is unbeatable you go to vayaleka or you go to inner areas on ring road and other things without an auto you can't even go okay so auto has definitely got a place but if you take a look at the short history of bangalore now before 2015 your only ipt mode in bangalore was auto there were no taxis in uh, unlike mumbai or whatever taxis never took off in bengaluru if, uh, uh, is that right sir isn't it until the platform of uh, ola and uber came taxis were never popular in bengaluru it was always autos 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 so autos actually fulfilled an unwritten thing where buses do not go autos were mopping up the demand and now the autos themselves have realized they have to mop up the demand of both the metro and the buses it's almost like a sea you got your big rocks passing through small rocks passing through and then the final thing you have to so that's how your hierarchy is and between these three things if there's a seamless interface through fair products and open mobility architecture now then suddenly we'll become like london you'll say hey why would i want to bother to take a car today already it's happening people who own the car they say i may as well do a chauffeur driven aggregator thing rather than take my car unless you have to you're going with a family to three or four places so that thinking We, the the quality of the multimodal product will become so big that we'll start wondering whether i need to up, upgrade to my next car wherein you'll rather upgrade to a cycle rather than a car and that's exactly what's going to happen if you get this right and we will get this right but in terms mm-hmm. of the app itself it doesn't really say mm-hmm. it's only for autos right uh, yeah yeah that can namayatri aggregate something oh, yeah. else it's up to them or or it's a, so the, the funny thing is they got their entire app not funny thing it's a great thing actually uh, their entire app is on github github okay if an entrepreneur wants to take that source code and simply plug tax instead of auto we are guess we want to call it uh, something else namma karu that's fine more the better but as a concept mm. though when you say this is aggregating a bunch of things mm. or oh, you saying that the person who the i think it's just, just say, yeah they they're thrown up the entire right? source code yeah so they 
right so but they might have thrown up the source code but they're saying we'll only do this auto so that's the, the, they're not the, yeah. saying we will do no that's their thing. current uh, thinking I, i can't predict what okay. they want to do tomorrow but they're focused on getting this right uh, which touch wood till now has been fantastic yeah. but a little bit about your uh, uh, journey yeah on this app will be useful what what what's interesting what stood out to you yeah you, you, you may remember satya while i was serving with the government as the chief technical advisor i used to head a group called alternative mobility group and you're a member of that and we were actually brainstorming as to how do we make other modes popular how do we make the P- pbs popular how do we sort of uh, reimagine stuff wherein we can uh, get some radical solutions and at that point in time i got to know through sujit about this open protocol being piloted in kochi and i was interested to take it forward uh, but then uh, by that time i had left the government and i couldn't get traction in the government at that uh, period uh since i left the government i took a four month break and when i came back uh, and again uh, thanks to you i said let me pick up a couple of things which i can do right and one of the thing was this because i saw a lot of potential on this thing the reason is i always thought autos were right for disruption uh, especially in this space because it was very well regulated see unlike taxis which are still in court cases as to whether they need to have a fare meter or not and all sorts of things autos always had a fare meter always had a fare card and people always asked to ask will you come on me which you never had that conversation with a taxi so the, the regulatory structure even in the brick and mortar economy for autos were always well there but then once the autos were co-opted into the platform as another mode in the current aggregator world now the auto driver was actually felt loss of agency and typical uber driver doesn't even know agency because he has never experienced it whereas an auto driver has experienced it and he has moved to an uh, uh, in the digital economy and that's when i said okay there is simmering discontent there and with that hypothesis i approached a few drivers and then uh, thankfully i met rudramurthy who is one of the uh, leading uh, community leaders for auto drivers uh, for the past 30 years and through him we had conversation with several drivers and two things emerged basically one was drivers felt a sense of loss of autonomy in agency that was very clear they said uh, to use uh, to use uh, in their own land parlance ನಮ್ ಏನ್ ದುಡ್ಡು ಬರುತ್ತೋ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ದುಡ್ಡು ಹೋಗುತ್ತೋ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತೇ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಕಾಣಿಸುತ್ತೆ ತಗೊಂತೀವಿ ಅವ್ರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ತಗೊಂತೀವಿ ಸಾಯಂಕಾಲೇಶ್ ಬರತ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಕಸ್ಟಮರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಿ ಒಪೇಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೈಸಿಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹಾರಿಬಲ್ ದೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪೇಯಿಂಗ್ whether they are paying for surge or whether they are paying for god or it will be and sometimes they use a coupon of 20 rupees or 30 rupees so you just don't know what you're doing there was complete opaqueness and the biggest problem was uh, whenever a customer actually saw an horrific bill like 100 rupees for one and a half kilometer on auto he used to vent out his frustration with the poor auto driver <laughs> and the auto driver was at pains to explain to him madam i am not getting your 100 rupees i am only getting 30 rupees see this is what it is. so that was they are telling hey hang on i am doing not only the service provision i am also becoming an agony aunt for the aggregator uh, wherein i have to take all this galia from customer so that, and then they were saying they were craving for empowerment wherein uh, they, to use their own words namde on the app ittre so that was the language they were using so okay let's say okay nimde on the app agbardu so that was the way we started when these two problem statement we said okay we want to be very clear we don't want to go to another version of an aggregator because if somebody works on a commission or appropriating some of the earnings of the driver that's not going to sustain that we were very clear the next question was the saas one and very clearly many saas although the ability to do a more an uh, software solution lies with the variety of players it's a very well known problem which has been solved they were not entering this market because creating the network effect was very tough just on your saas revenues you can't survive if there is not a network effect but with the three or two or three incumbents actually having captured the market there was no incentive for any saas operator to come that's when we said how can we lower the cost structure of the entire thing so what are the two key cost structures in acquiring customers supposing you could acquire customers through multiple channels that's when the open mobility and the o- joining this ontc using that protocol was clear for us then we approached uh, just pay who had developed the app for kochi uh, and they were quite uh, initially reluctant because the kochi experience for them did not quite go as per plan so but then uh, when they saw the numbers which uh, bengaluru is 10 times bigger than kochi and bengaluru has got an ecosystem wherein they embrace uh, innovation far more better than perhaps kochi they said yeah we'll, we'll do it and that's when 
from day one we were very clear the user specification of this application will come from the users themselves who are the users for just pay the drivers so the drivers designed this is what i want on the commercial side and the way they designed was very very elegant in their own mind they were very clear whatever we do that agency and autonomy is always sharp if there is competition if there is no competition i become there so they said let's have a small float wherein a driver can quote an additional 10 rupees or 20 rupees as a request as a tip for his own assessment as to uh, i'm going to that area it's always jammed with traffic i'll be losing about half an hour so I'll, if i if the customer pays me another 10 rupees i'll take it but then knowing very well there might be another driver who has got more appetite to serve it just straight away without that additional 10 rupees so that was the feature they wanted and that was agreed and the other thing they said was the government fare of 30 rupees for 2 kilometers unfortunately did not cover the dead mileage for them to go and pick up their passengers at the home that ranged between say what sometimes 800 meters sometimes 1.7 kilometers so they themselves conversed and agreed a flat 10 rupees pickup fare is reasonable so basically that's how the whole thing came in they they in their mindset they were very clear if i take an amayatri trip i'm not going to go out of pocket because i get 10 rupees for picking up from their home and then i get the metered fare which is government agreed and which is recently updated so i'm okay but even over this if i want something i got the ability to ask for an additional 10 or 20 knowing very well i'm in a competitive pool so that uh, proposition of how they interact with the government was i mean with the customers was very clear and for the customers hey you got a list of drivers Supposing you're agnostic and you are price insensitive for just that plus 10 or plus 20, you can preset. I, I, I don't care whether it's a plus 10 or plus 10, directly allocate me a driver. And I have to, I can allocate a driver. My preferred choice would be who is nearer to me, who is highly rated or who is cheaper. Whatever order you want to choose, you can choose. So you can, as a customer, if you think you want the machine to do the job, you can outsource that. Or, hey, you want to play around, I like to write a driver whose name starts with a V or a A, you choose. I'll drop a list of drivers who are willing to do that. Then you, you choose what you want to take. So that suddenly became a digital conversation, which they used to have at an auto stand in the brick and mortar economy. So that's how the whole thing was considered. And the Just Pace UI designers did a fantastic job. They built a lightweight app. And the look and feel of everything is spot on there. And it took off. So the pilot uh, was launched on April uh, sorry, in August 15th, a date chosen by the driving community themselves because they wanted freedom. <laughs> so last year, August 15th, the pilot was launched. And during the pilot, the drivers actively participated. They gave extensive feedback to JustPay. This is not working. That's not working. Your mapping software is wrong. It's showing this thing. So that all those glitches were soft, uh, sorted out. And on November 1st, a beta version was launched. And in January, it went live. And uh, between November and here in four months, it has clocked up impressive numbers. Okay, as of yesterday, the drivers' direct driver earnings through this application is nine crore rupees. So today, over the last four, uh, last week, last one week, each day they are fulfilling fourteen thousand to fifteen thousand trips. And yesterday they beat all records. They went to seventeen thousand. So and it's growing. And this dashboard is in front of them because of this dashboard, the drivers say, "Hey, today we need to hit twenty k. Tomorrow we need to do twenty two k." And the cancellation, That's everything right. is coming in front of them. This is the cancellation rate. This is the hot map, heat map of where the searches are, where the drivers are, how many are already on the ride. Everything transparent because just pay was fantastic. They said, we are committing to open. The government can take the data. Researchers can take the data. Developers can take the data. I want to be an entrepreneur can take the source code and do his own app. No problem. So that's the story. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Uh, I saw that live uh, dashboard as well. Yeah. Um, it's at uh, namayatri.in slash open right. and it shows exactly how much they earn, where the services are being rendered, yeah. which water is cut. I'll put a screenshot of sure. that uh, when I edit this yeah. video. But uh, that's that, that this brings up two interesting questions. One is that this, this uh, three actually. The first one is the ability to show live data. Mm. There's this absolute transparency. You can see how much they're running, yeah. where it is being yeah. served. It builds a lot of confidence yeah. in people that, hey, so many trips are actually being done. Yeah. It's not yeah. like nothing is being done. So if you didn't get an auto and it shows zero, it shows yeah. zero, yeah. right? There is nothing yeah. being served. Things that I wanted to come back mm. to on this is the conversation people have, you said, uh, at the corner of the street with the mm. auto driver. Uh, it doesn't usually go around with what's your name. 
but it does go around the pricing yeah. right now you mentioned that there is a rate card mm-hmm. it's very well regulated for many years and you all the app aggregators are sticking to that price card broadly no, right no not until um, last october they are not absolutely not uh-huh. until last october tell me about tell me about the price card uh, thing what is the regulation say about the price the regulation card? is very clear the government actually sets the fr- price uh, actually it has to do it from a reg- on a regular basis but unfortunately it doesn't because the law says hmm. um, the government may what do you call update the price from time to time so that time to time is defined by bureaucrats the way they want it in the instance of bengaluru in 2013 the price card was uh, updated and after 7 years in 2021 it got updated again so it took 7 years for the government to update the auto fare card and in 2021 uh, they fixed this thing for 2 kilometers is 30 rupees and for every additional kilometers it's 15 rupees and in the evening between 10 pm and 5 am you can take one and a half times the normal rate so that that's your fare card but what this fare card doesn't do is it doesn't cover for your dead mileage to go and pick from your uh, home and that's the additional 10 rupees which namayatriya incorporate so essentially your the customer is essentially paying for the service for him to be picked up right from his home because the rate card doesn't reflect that price in that 30 bucks the 30 bucks is for you to go on a street and hail auto wherein there is no dead mileage you hail auto and you go on hop on and go on. so that's how the uh, rate card has been factored into or baked into the price card as a customer they clearly know i am paying 10 bucks for a pickup charge fair enough but then the for the driver what, what, what is this incentive if everybody is quoting the same price uh, people may start choosing who is nearer only i mean i mean lose out so and also they know it's 2023 already and we don't know whether that fare card is going to get updated and uh, and, and the central government itself basically says for app app based uh, uh, raid hailing services you should incorporate dead mileage and if you use the 2020 central government guidelines the minimum amount of fare should be 45 rupees on an app so th- that's how it is they say basically it should be 3 kilometers not 2 kilometers that's the minimum fare so all things said and done the drivers themselves decided if you have a small float say 10 plus 10 ability to quote extra 10 rupees or 20 rupees that will create a, a competitive spirit and also they will they'll get some pricing signals also like right now uh if i quote plus 10 am i getting more rights if i get plus uh, 20 am i getting lesser rights or if i just stick to my pickup charges i'm getting rights anyway so that pricing signal uh, is now up there on the dashboard we will, they they actually get everything uh, the drivers with uh, how for an each driver and then we said it's all fine for you to have plus 10 and plus 20 but you need to also sign up to community commitments what do i mean by community commitment zero cancellation and doing that last mile connectivity especially at zero cancellation right so the driver said yeah fantastic and that's why you can see shortly and uh, metro to home uh, fixed price no cancellation guarantee rate card and the driver rating will also depend on if he cancels on zero cancellation trip though his rating will go down He's, he very well knows that within the community so we want to really make reliability and customer centricity baked into the behavior of drivers and they should do so voluntarily and with pride and they are doing so and that because it's all emerging from those conversations only with them so you will soon see a product wherein 2 kilometers anywhere uh, around the metro station no questions asked 40 bucks flat and for 3 kilometers 55 bucks flat and if the government allows shared autos so essentially you can actually do a ride uh, of 2 uh, kilometer around the station for just about 10 rupees or 15 rupees it comes back to one mm. uh, useful thing right mm. so in this is the only thing that i am seeing let's take a bus operator for example mm. he or she sets the prices that company sets the prices mm. Uh, in most places if it's bmrcl metro they set the prices because they own the fare uh, only in ipt modes like auto rickshaw mm. and taxi somebody else is setting the prices for them right he owns the vehicle but he doesn't get to charge what he wants somebody else in the government decides what he should be charging is that ideal why can't uh, why can't an auto driver say i want to set what i want it's my vehicle yaar i just want to ride it it's it's uh, what is yeah. Why, why is this why is this price can you can you get away it of course yeah. it came from mm. a older world i can yeah, yeah. understand where there were actual actual meters mm. it needed to be calibrated yeah. so that they weren't cheating yeah. and all that but at the end of the day you bought the auto you want to run it and you're asking yeah, for a yeah. permit and you want to price it how you yeah. want like pbs operators yeah. want to price it the way they want so that they can make money Absolutely. the public bicycle sharing guys right or the or the electric motorbikes that are going around yeah, yeah. 
uh, the electric vehicles, they set their own prices. Government doesn't set the price for them. Why is this alone like that? Why is the auto rickshaw like that? Or a taxi like that? That's a good question, actually. But I think there is a history to this. Okay. Uh, Initially, um, I think uh, a free fair market proposition would have ideally worked if investments into public transport and the public transport service provision was actually beating if not most, or at least 75% of the demand and requirement. That was not the case then or even now. So in that situation, if you throw in uh, a laissez fair approach, what would happen is, uh, what happened with Ola and Uber uh, previously, wherein you started paying 110 rupees for one and a half kilometer of auto. So suddenly, that is because there is a huge consumer surplus because the incumbent public transport are not able to fulfill the demand for lack of investment. As you know, Satya, like now, 6,000 buses 10 years ago, 6,000 buses now, and still 1,000 buses mothballed because they don't have staff. So that is not an ideal situation. If you have an ideal market competition, then you could do. The regulation here is mostly for procure for what for protecting con- consumer interest, the customer interest. And as such in autos, uh, you have to see that fare as a guidance rather than cast in stone because autos get permit as contract permits. So it's a c- contract permit. So for each transaction is a per contract I make with the auto driver and that is a guidance value and that's the reason why when uh, somebody says uh, automobile uh, meter mil hat kodi pat kodi means is not uh, illegal it's legal because it's a contract I agree and I pay if I do not agree you don't have to write so you can't say you can't demand because it is high. this permit says so I am in a contract carriage I can ask for anything I want as long as the other party is willing to pay. So that's the extreme end of the logic. But what is this guidance value? That's the signaling to both the customer and the service provider. This we believe is the fair based on a ground up cost analysis. So that's all. And if there is pure computation, I expect the rates to pivot around the government rate, assuming the government has done a good cost of ground up analysis. But if it keeps updating every eight years, that will also go away. So that's, um, <laughs> I think that's where the yeah, danger yeah, really yeah, is, yeah. right? I mean, you can always have guidance values, like how property guidance yeah, values are yeah. there. But is it is it le- legally just, mm. is the government rate card actually just a guidance? Is it possible mm. for, for, why are autos being arrested or the police say, if he charges over and above the meter fare, tell me. Is it legal for the person no, no, to, they, yeah. is it illegal for the person no, to ask no, more? it isn't. In fact, I think the police it police won't arrest also because my with my conversation with auto drivers, they, they are very clear. It's only because lack of knowledge amongst auto drivers as to what their permit says. Their permit clearly says you are a contract carriage. You are a contract carriage. And what price is there? That's the guidance value. Or if if an free in a free market economy with no barriers to competition and everybody were having every price signal was accurate and updated no then the government uh, fair is a fair fair so to speak because it's 2021 is not yet dated now we are seeing everybody doing it for only that additional 10 rupees pickup which basically means you are paying the government fair but if the government doesn't change that 2021 fair in another three years you can expect that to rise creep up it's only natural isn't it the other side of the mm-hmm. argument was which was uh, what i was making on the public bicycle sharing mm-hmm. uh, uh, argument also is that isn't IPT an extension to the public transport service, mm. right? Uh, in most yeah. cases, there are full trips that it makes as an auto rickshaw. That's mm. fine. Every in, uh, vehicle will yeah, make yeah. some full trips, which are end to end. And you may not need the IPT mm. segment. IPT for everybody else is yeah. intermediate paratransit, which is not necessarily public transport, not private, but it's like this intermediate between public transport. But you have... you. Uh, what is your analysis of that situation? Isn't it, if it is an extension, do you think government is trying to get into it to say, look, we need some price control on that because it is without that, my mainline modes will start suffering. Uh, 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 yeah, as, uh, because my mainline uh, modes can't extend. Is is that the thinking? No, is no, there no. A thinking I don't think that? that's the case anyway. But the government belatedly has started to realize is rather than being an extension, no, which is one way of looking, I will also say it is the funnel through which you get your trips to. Because if you don't have your first mile, last mile connectivity, who would bother to ride a metro vehicle? Today, we are in a situation, I pay for a trunk kilometer or trunk 10 kilometers on a metro, 36 bucks, and then end up paying 100 bucks for another last two kilometers means. Then I'll say my cost of this journey is 100 plus 136, 136. I may as well take my bike at my leisure and then do it at 80 bucks or 90 bucks. That's the perverse situation we have landed ourselves in. But if a multimodal channel operates thoroughly, then if the auto 
person uh, or a last mile connected instead of demanding an arbitrary 110 if he's doing a fixed 40 bucks 40 plus 36 suddenly become suddenly i'm doing 76 rupees the same journey which on my scooter costs 85 or 90 then i will shift them to but here's the question then mm. i ask why did that mainline mode become 36 mm. if the cost per kilometer for the last mile mm. came up to 100 which is shorter the main line is obviously subsidized by oh, yeah. uh, the government hugely because it has other efficiencies of uh, more number of people. So the cost per customer is divided mm-hmm. among more mm-hmm. because your carriage ability is mm-hmm. more. So your per kilometer will be lesser, mm-hmm. but it still has additional subsidies uh, yeah. that are applied. But the last mile modes don't have that. They don't even have an incentive to feed your main mm-hmm. line. That's what I meant by when I said extension mm-hmm. is, is there an incentive today in the in the market? to feed public transport at all ah, yeah. because it seems to me that the incentives the pricing structure is such that people want to complete the trips in the ipt mode rather than feed to the mainline because they get no additional benefit by feeding yeah. to the mainline and like you said the cost of that last mile segment is usually more yeah. than the mainline mode itself yeah. how do we reconcile yeah. this that's exactly why multimodal comes in and that information asymmetry is broken up and then government opens up these fair products wherein Say, for instance, if BMRCL uh, were to be already on an open mobility network, uh, as some third party person can, can come and say, I can operate a multimodal fare which combines both an auto and this. Thing. So suddenly, uh, I'll start thinking, see, why should I take my scooter all the way? That's my option A, which means I take the pain of parking at that end and other thing. Option B is I take my scooter to the metro and again pay 40 bucks there. So that's painful. I'd rather take this multimodal card. I just go take an auto. I get it because I don't even have to argue that station means you go and drop me at the station. And from the station, I go. That's where we need to get into. So to answer your other question as to why it is 100 rupees. No, that is basically very simple. There is a misconception amongst auto drivers that uh, if you fulfill a trip which is worth 300 rupees and if your profit is uh, only say 30 rupees or whatever on that thing, it's basically 10%. And around 40 rupees, 10 uh, they actually get 10 rupees extra profit, which is more, more than 10 percent, it's 20 percent. But in their mind, the ticket value is determining whether they want to take it. So, we are trying to get them financial literacy. You can be within near your home just to do this metro to trips 20 times over, and you actually your net will be higher than what you would get if you slogged and waited for three hours to take a long trip three times and navigate the traffic. So, that conversation is going on. So, that's why this new fare product, when we get in metro to home fare, now we are actually trying to say. This would remove barriers for women too. Local women can actually take up this thing. Uh, EV vehicles, re- f- right, uh, fare card, uh, fixed fare, everything. So you don't have to refuse. Just uh, download an Amayatri app or whoever else may offer that tomorrow thing and just do only the metro to home fulfillment. You'll be fine off with a net of 800 rupees, 900 rupees by the end of the day. So you don't even have to go anywhere. So we expect those sort of uh, innovations to come around uh, as we go ahead. But that financial literacy and their ability to understand uh, the way we have engaged with auto drivers is in a very interesting way. It's not trying to teach them uh, <laughs> balance sheet and all sorts of things. It's basically to tell them in the future when Metro completes its network and if they've got 175, it's inevitable they have to do only feeder. They can't escape that fact. They are already realizing that. Metro so, so that is their way of telling. So trip ide, but you're not doing it. That message is now going. Okay, then that aha moment drops in. Oh, that's the reason. So you, you, you can expect some magical things happening around multimodality. Satya, that's for sure. We are working very hard for that. Yeah, I can imagine where that is. But I just wanted to address one more, two more questions mm. around. One is on the regulation itself. Mm. Where does the, where do the regulations stand? Uh, on auto rickshaws or cab aggregators mm-hmm. and all of these things. Is that all settled? Is it clean? Is it clear? Uh, are there any challenges around that? No, it's, it's, it's gray. It's in gray area, getting grayer every day. <laughs> That's the way I put it. So, uh, I think the Karnataka state government's stated position is uh, autos are not covered under their aggregator policy. Mm-hmm. The next thing, the aggregator policy itself is under challenge in the hike, which has not been judged yet. So, we are in this gray area. So we have to await for regulatory clarity and I'm hoping 
BMLTA would be able to direct or at least engage in conversation with transport department to, you know, give some clear signals. Because as you rightly said, Satya, this has actually been a barrier for many potential entrants. Many of them do the business analysis and say, okay, regulation is gray area. We don't know where, which way it may take tomorrow. Is it worth it? Let's wait. So that is also happening. So it's, uh, it's, it's very important, A, whether regulation is required at all. By that, I mean, are the adequate, uh, are the kind of, uh, current safeguards adequate? By this, I what I want to emphasize is regulation is always slow to catch up. Now, because in Karnataka, there is either no regulation or the existing regulation is under litigation. Whenever a refresh is happening, that such a regulation should understand the app-led mobility world is just not aggregator. It can also be SaaS-led solution. So, and that distinction is important. They should understand that distinction. Only then, innovation will thrive. But if you just put everybody in one bucket now the cost of regulation will be simply passed on to the customer and that means you still your private vehicle dependency will still be there so just just to put it in context no, your monthly commuting in london is cheaper uh, than in bengaluru why <laughs> so because you got over regulation or the information asymmetry or like right let's say lack of incentives for multimodality to happen i think lack of incentives or multimodality is one thing that we need to tackle but on the regulation side hmm. I, I also feel that the SaaS model was an innovation to, uh, there is no regulation. You could just might as well say, hey, here's a SaaS thing and I won't call myself an aggregator and this is how, let's figure out a way. So it does lead to certain other innovations in how you approach the solution itself, right? It, it's, easy, it's easier to follow and uh, cookie cutter the aggregator approach and call it the aggregator. Mm. But now you've come across and said that this is not at all aggregation, it is a SaaS. Yeah. It's a tool that I'm providing the auto driver. So, so I think it, it was a part of, it's always, uh, Sati, mm. uh, one of the things is the industry always front runs mm. in, in, in most uh, verticals. It, it ends up front running and they, I think the government has accepted. It's just that some departments, uh, especially departments like transport, which are mired in a lot of influences, mm. um, end up becoming extremely slow and laggard. And we've never had a, had a capa- built capacity in transport regulation, unlike in yeah. financial markets and yeah. telecom and many other things there are, or aviation. There have always been empowered regulator with expertise. This has always been a private-led market, you know, yeah. with private vehicles. And suddenly we start looking at public transport becoming bigger. The regulation will, in all industries, it needs to catch up. But I think in transport, the regulator doesn't even exist in most places. If I can think of other than the Chennai Umta, which is not empowered as a regulator, yeah. uh, BMLT is the only one I think uh, is empowered as a regulator, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think uh, even that empowerment uh, second thing uh, I wanted... uh, is still yet to be tested because... Uh, the so-called government order notifying that it has to start started. is not yet started. So 16 years to pass it's the not, bill. It's not started yet. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's a frustrating. I don't, I, don't, don't, don't say the next words. <laughs> don't say the next word. It shouldn't be another 16 to get started. <laughs> oh, definitely not. I think we are around to make sure it's not that long. Well, hopefully we'll still be around when it uh, when it gets started. Uh, but uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to look at is this, uh, since it's not aggregator and since it's open and there are lots of challenges. Oh, so, so, right I want to stop you there, Sadia. Ho, right? I want to stop you there, very simple. Because uh, when you say aggregator and SaaS, no, that distinction is clear to you and me. But the way the government defines regulator is, even if you simply make a phone call mm. to the auto driver, you become an aggregator. It's an all-encompassing definition. Okay, the reason why currently uh, the regulation is grey, or at least the regulation in Karnataka at least, is very clear. Autos are not covered under aggregator policy. To that extent, they have made it clear. That's the only reason. But the definition of aggregator today is all consuming, all subsuming. So it includes SaaS also as aggregator. So that's, that's the why I said when the next refresh happens, it has to make distinction. It can basically say a SaaS provider is recognized under the policy, but for regulation purpose, the SaaS product should have these features like an SOS feature, a customer service. Those are the things product specification from regulative perspectives can be defined. But you can't call him an aggregator. That's what I'm trying to say. But the current definition of aggregator is everything. Everybody is an aggregator technically. So who owns the liabilities in a SaaS model versus uh, in an aggregator model, you have somebody's throat you can hold. Hmm. But whose throat are you holding in a SaaS model? Is it every individual auto driver to his own? Is there somebody who who signs up to some liabilities? How is this? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Like, if I understand what you're saying, there is no law at all for liabilities right now. No, there is. I mean, seriously, if, if you hail an auto without using an app, 
what's the what's your production today the same production is there so it's going to be the same it's the same production except because you went through an app the app has got an sos feature all the existing compliance requirement in the policies they have been baked into the product you got an sos you got a customer service you got an escalation of a complaint resolution everything with existing consumer protection laws but not specifically for any autos or whatever because there is no such law see customer centrality actually should be owned by the auto drivers that's the way we look at it as a saas provider your focus is on reliability and availability of that platform of that technology 24/7 so that your maps don't crash your fair computing algorithm doesn't crash you know that is that is their outlook for fulfilling the service uh, is the driver's outlook making sure that he has got a mutual respect for the customer doesn't get into a cat fight with them all these things always research should reside with the driver because the moment you say oh no no the driver's behavior is a responsibility of an saas operator no then you push him to become an aggregator then he'll say for that behavior control i'll take commission so that we shouldn't do that i think that's a f- mm. fair way to uh, conclude that piece of this thing one, one last thing is it's all nice now mm. there's a lot of enthusiasm to go on this model mm. they're getting more money and they're putting it mm. where do you see the long term sustainability of the behavior at the end of the day the app is only solving one problem mm. earlier we used to do this to get the cab then we used to sure. call uh, the auto yeah. then we used to call the auto using voice now we yeah. are doing yeah. click 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 to do that the function is different he has yeah. when you do this he only sees the people around there yeah. now or a call it used to be one on one now with the app he can see a few more people in the neighborhood yeah. uh, but Uh, at the end of the day is this long term is also behavior it's not just about the app mm-hmm. right will they will if each one has his own agency and autonomy as you call it mm. uh, and is his own ethics mm. of uh, refusing not refusing and all mm. that mm. Uh, so initially you said the app is trying to solve some of those problems mm. maybe not all of it yeah. how do you see the enthusiasm and the commitment to uh, this group of auto drivers you are working at will it scale to anybody and everybody can anybody and everybody just individually sign up to this and say mm. i have my auto i want to sign up i want to use this i want to pay as you go like google correct, i can correct. sign up i don't correct. need any correct, correct. other intermediary agencies to guide me correct. Correct. it's just an eu la end user license agreement that i sign up absolutely right i think that's the premise on which we have started you basically don't prejudge the driver's authenticity or the driver's behavior but you'd be held to account as through his performance metrics is a continuous feedback and we expect the collective group behavior to shape the ecosystem behavior too and there are right incentive structure to make sure because for the drivers now they they are re- really feeling that empowerment now they don't want to get lo- less, lose this thing so just imagine the drivers coming and telling please give me a product wherein i'm going to commit zero cancellation fixed fare for doing last mile connectivity this is the driver community saying we're not imposing on them so that is that is what gives nice. me hope and a lot of confidence that this is going to sustain and this is the future in fact the ondc merger uh, i mean not merger i would say ondc partnership with namayatri or ondc adopting mobility as another category into their network what this heralds in my mind is what i call as a omni open mobility network for india and omni by the way as you all know in the transport sector is anywhere everywhere all pervasive so that's what it is so you don't have to have private vehicle you got this open mobility network operating you can stitch together fantastic trips so much so uh, like say for instance i'm going to a de- trip to delhi okay and the de- i can book everything from here all the way to my guest house in delhi where i'm going to stay for my business trip everything here that's the power of an home everywhere all pervasive and what we see today is the first building blocks coming and the idea is so powerful and I expect rapid uh, adoption by the industry lot of innovations perhaps spawning around products somebody may come and say and payments company may come and say i'll just have an uh, omni card what is an omni card you can use anywhere in india for any of your mobility all based on the protocol of open mobility so i see a lot of uh, uh, exciting times ahead for the mobility sector yeah omni present as they call exactly. it exactly any questions from your side yeah that's true i did actually have a concluding question just coming back to your point on the uh, true multimodal trip essentially yeah. what are the conversations that you're going to have to have for a true multimodal trip on an open you don't even have to have a conversation i'll just explain to you how it will work okay you awesome. basically say um i want to uh, let me put i stay in kangeri satellite town 
as i want to go to indra nagar okay what today uh, the nearest i can tell you is if you go to google map and say i want to go from kengeri satellite home to indra nagar it gives me all options if you walk it will take 3 hours if you cycle it will take so much if you take the metro it will take so much now just use another tab there it will say go by auto till this place go by this things but unlike google wherein you just know the information in an omni world you actually can buy that trip and make it happen. this has been an exciting conversation uh, satya thank you for uh, being on the show and explaining how this thing works and we wish uh, the namaya 3 team the beckon team people like you who have contributed a lot to this effort all the very best and uh, let's hope we see more innovations coming out of uh, of these kind of things and at the end of the day uh, it's about structuring this going forward to make sure yeah. that uh, we get the public transport uh, mode share up and reduce the use of private vehicles on the road and auto has been playing a big role and of course yeah, so does cycling walking and public transport at the end and these three together uh, should serve us uh, yeah. well any parting thoughts satya before we so shall firstly thank you for having me here today both uh, satya and nirav and i think it's been great i actually get child like enthusiasm when i talk about these things so this is amazing stuff happening what the space and do contribute uh, because one of the key things about namayatri is it's conceived as an digital cooperative it's an empowered digital cooperative community should participate and uh, for me why we got here so quickly uh, perhaps the first in the world over four months to get about half a million customer base and about 50000 that's a third of bengaluru auto drivers on your uh, technology solution and fulfilling about 15000 trips each day are three things we had constructive conversations and the product was collaboratively co-created and then the community contribution so these three things were embedded right from day one and that's reflected in the product not only now in the future too so join those conversations there's an open challenge going on if you want to go pick up and say i want to have this idea i want to see that in your product and if it gets particularly a lot of upticks from conversations going around that thing why not that will happen so yeah there we go and the website is namayatri.in and i will put that down in the show notes and uh, on that note last call subscribe uh, like and watch these videos they are very informative this is your soapbox for urban sustainability and uh, uh, thank you very much and see you all uh, next week oh don't forget to subscribe to the cfam newsletter uh, cfam.substack.com yeah. i'll put that down as well bye everyone bye everyone and i would endorse satya's comment please subscribe mobility requires great conversations going around it will make our cities great thanks